We know that patients who have enlarged aortas or aneurysms of the ascending aorta are at great risk for one of two major life-threatening events, either aortic rupture, where it just bursts, and the other problem is aortic dissection, or a tearing or a splitting of the inner lining of the wall of the blood vessel that can also lead to rupture or other complications down the line as this tear extends into various vessels that may supply the brain, the coronary arteries, and can even go down and cause tremendous damage to the aortic valve. Once you get over five centimeters in diameter, the risk of those events is fairly well described and can be as high as 15% per year in patients whose aneurysms exceed five, five centimeters in diameter. And particularly risky population are young patients with connective tissue disorders or strong family histories of aneurysms and dissections who we know have a great propensity for a catastrophic event. And so in patients who are identified with enlarged aortas who we follow with various imaging studies, be it echo, MRA, CT scanning, once they get over the five centimeter mark, we start thinking about intervening. And if their valves are functional, then we start thinking about a valve sparing procedure for them rather than trying to delay them to a larger size and let their valve deteriorate so that when they finally get a valve replacement, we're hoping it's their only operation. Um, but having the option of replacing the aorta and leaving the valve intact has given us another option for these patients. It also has allowed us to intervene earlier than we might otherwise um, in, in trying to eliminate the risk of rupture or dissection because now we feel that if we intervene at 5 centimeters or even 4.8 or 4.9 centimeters, we eliminate the risk of the catastrophic event, we don't add the risk of anticoagulation, and we hopefully give them a valve that functions well that they can have the rest of their life. Patients who present with enlarged or uh, bigger than normal aortas, specifically in the aortic root where the coronary arteries come off and where the aortic valve is, in the past really had only one option for taking care of that problem. And that was replacing the aorta with an artificial graft, but then having to replace the valve for the most part. And so even if the valve was functional and worked fine, and would have a very good durability in the long run if left alone, we didn't really have the technology or a means of preserving that valve, and so these patients all underwent valve replacement. And in a lot of younger patients who had life expectancies of 30 or 40 years, they chose mechanical valves, which were great for durability. Most of those patients would never have a valve wear out in that time of the rest of their life, but they always had to be on lifelong anticoagulation. And that's a big problem when you consider that there's approximately a 1% to 2% per year risk of a major bleeding or a clotting complication related to Coumadin. Um, if you took a tissue valve, then you knew you'd be back in 10 to 15 years, or even with newer generation bioprosthetic valves, maybe 20 years. But if you're 48 or 40, you're coming back. And that's a big operation with fairly a fairly high complication rate and risk. Um, valve sparing surgery takes care of the aneurysm problem by leaving the valve in place. And so the patient's native valve is replaced up inside a new graft. And the hope would be is to get good, good long-term function from your own native valve without the need for anticoagulation, without the need for reoperation. Ultimately, uh, that would be the goal is having that in place while you're taking care of the patient's most threatening problem, which is an ascending aortic aneurysm. The uh, operation takes around three, three and a half hours total. And after the surgery, they're in the intensive care unit, usually for just one day. And after surgery, we get them up and around. They're in the step-down unit walking uh, and ambulating very early after surgery. And most of our patients are discharged within four or five days after the procedure. Once they're home, they're able to ambulate, uh, they're able to walk stairs, um, sleep in a normal bed, eat a regular diet, and not have to worry about how their dietary needs change with Coumadin. And so not a lot has changed other than the need for recovery um, and, and just continued cardiac rehab, which we would do for any other patient having heart surgery. The ideal candidate is somebody whose aorta is right around five centimeters, even upwards of 5.5 centimeters and whose aortic valve still functions fairly well. 
if you look at the research that's been done over the years and the studies that have been done looking at long-term and intermediate-term outcomes after this procedure, the patients who have valve failure relatively early in the following the procedure are those who have aortas that are very dilated, usually six centimeters or greater, at least in my opinion, as a relative contraindication to the procedure. Similarly, if you have moderate to severe aortic insufficiency, you can preserve that valve, but there has been some damage to that valve beyond just the aneurysm pulling it apart. The leaflets seem to be more thinned out, more stretched out. They have little tears in them, what we call fenestrations, that may affect long-term durability of the procedure. So if you can get patients earlier with less aortic valve insufficiency and smaller aortic diameters, the procedure seems to work well in the short run and has a better durability long term. I think the thing to know about valve sparing surgery, most importantly, is that it is an option. I'm not certain that it's for everybody. Uh, I think that there are certainly risks in trying to fit every single patient into the valve sparing category. And I think inappropriate application of this procedure will lead to poor outcomes not so much at the time of surgery because I think we can get most patients through this operation just fine. But if we're really trying to do them a service and give them a lifelong operation with their own valve in place, then we have to do a very good job at patient selection and not try to make every patient fit into this, this keyhole that we have for valve sparing surgery. So for cardiologists, for internists, and for patients who are looking for or need an aortic root replacement, this should be something that you should consider but understand that it may not necessarily be the right thing for you. But if you go to a center that does it all the time, you'll get a thorough evaluation by experienced people who understand what is and isn't feasible, and we'll give you the operation that we think that is right for you, or we will offer you the operation that we think that is right for you. And I think that's very important for patients and the referring physicians to understand, is that while we like this procedure and we're trying to promote this procedure as something new and exciting for patients, um, it's not for everyone. And so if you come here, we will give you the appropriate evaluation and we'll, we'll offer you what we think is best for you.